All right, so today we're going to talk about a little mix of uh, information, a little uh, hype, a little drama, you know, drama llama to the rescue. So let's, uh, let's get into it. Okay, so recently I uh, started UAV Tech Facebook page, and uh, for a while I wasn't really doing anything with it. So ultimately, I was uh, at a hotel uh, for some work this last week, and I was like, oh, I'll make some posts on from information. Well, I started on like, hey, this is this is kind of nice, and just do like a morning post kind of a thing. So started throwing out some just random information, because sometimes I don't feel like stuff is video worthy. I don't know. And uh, it basically started with some of these links on PID controllers and examining beyond, you know, just some things that I was really just looking at myself and I thought, wow, this is kind of interesting. I'll, you know, I'll post that up. Maybe other people will find it interesting as well. So it was a couple uh, posts on control theory, uh, how I turn relaxes, I turn clamping, which is a well-established control theory thing. And, and uh, trying to fight back against a little bit of the misinformation that's put out there. Like, you know, these, uh, you know, they got into drama because I, I don't know how to avoid it. When people were saying things, uh, for like a propaganda kind of reason, I, I feel compelled to jump in when what they're saying is just wrong. That's not true. It's their propaganda. People are eating it up and people don't fight against it. Well, that's what rules then. So I don't know. Anyways, that's the reason I jumped into it. I, I don't have any bitterness against people other than stop spreading wrong information. Don't do that and then I won't jump in. I prefer not to have to jump in. I'd prefer everybody's trying to provide right information. Anyways, uh, got into this and which started the kind of the drama train of why I was pushing back a little bit, you know, kind of felt like I needed to justify that a little bit. And then, um, then started posting some information, you know, just performance edition releases. Anyways, go check out this page. If you haven't liked it already, uh, go ahead. I do post it and share it out to some of the groups, but I, I, I don't know. I, uh, it's okay. I don't want to do it all the time because I don't want to just flood the groups with my crap. So I prefer if people just like it if they want to see it. If they don't, then don't. I, yeah, I'll throw it out in the groups every now and then if I think it's pertinent. pertinent. But um, yeah. So there is a big one on here that I thought I you know, took some time writing up is the whole uh, 32K uh, sampling, um, what you know? What's the right sampling rate? Why does Facebook suck so bad? What's the right sampling rate for you? What 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 makes a difference between eight two k k thirty two k? So check that out. I'll do a follow up video on that to show more information and evidence of what I'm talking about here because you know I'm whatever I'm saying I am not just making up because I've learned it from somewhere. So check out this post. I think it's really good. Uh, I'm not saying 32K is not valid, but it's not valid for what people are thinking. So just wanted to uh, show a little bit about what does happen in the real world for filter analysis. Uh, you know, it's been a lot of, I've been pretty critical of some of the practices of people and it's, and it's really you know, why am I critical over one set of hype versus another? It's because of the trash talk that goes along with the one set of hype, and you don't see that with the other hypes. You know, there's always hypes, right? There's every month or every couple months there's a hype. And like JB said, um, you know, you can buy into the hype. So some of this stuff is cheap. So, you know, $40 for a flight controller, it's not that much, right? So there's worse travesties in the world. But I'm just not that guy. I'm, you know, I don't have droves of dollars to spend on this stuff and I don't want to buy you know I want to spend 40 bucks or, or six bucks or whatever and be disappointed right that's why I watched YouTube videos to make sure what I'm getting look is good so I can you know put my money where it best spent uh, I don't know about the rest of you guys but like my wife is super critical over this stuff so it's not like I have an unlimited budget if you don't have that experience good on you throw your money around it helps the industry man it's good on you but um just, you know, some of the stuff that's going on in the past and in the future with filter analysis. I mean, this is how it's done. This is just from this yesterday or last night, uh, from this morning, we're looking at, uh, you know, I, I dabble with the Betaflight to 
you know, uh, help improve filters. You know, I, I'm not a, a code person, but I, you know, can do test flights and I know the fundamentals of how things work. So that's where you start, right? And then you develop a theory and then you do some calculations and you're like, okay, yeah, it looks like it's going to be a good idea. Let's try to code it up. Oh, does the code even work correctly? Guess we have to fly it and take what? Yeah, that's right, a black box log. Because you don't know if your code works without doing a black box log. So here's the code. For example, if you missed that, your code won't compile, first of all. So that's a different thing. But even when you have it all compiling, you don't know if it's operating correctly unless you do debug modes and confirm it with logs. This whole thing of Oh, well that video looks great. The videos are at 30 frames per second and shows the perspective of the quad. That's it. Black box logs can be up to 8,000 and even more frames per second. Usually I, I record at 4K, but 2K is a, a high enough recording rate. Uh, so that's 2,000 frames per second. And it records everything the quad's doing. And if it's not the fundamental stuff, you can make a debug mode in any software, whatever your firmware is. Flight One, uh, uh, Butterfly, or beta flight or kiss any of those can obviously the world's your oyster when you have the code you can do whatever you want so then you go ahead and you fly that record a log okay the fundamentals of the code are actually working cool next step let's compare uh, if we did or if our theory and then our calculations show and pan out to be correct so for example here there's a some test builds this is the the latest thing with the dynamic low pass filters and that went through its process of like were they working is this actually better and this was then better than the previous which was just the 4.0 and the you know there's a bunch of stages to get to this point so anyway that's what that was um, this is a new iteration and we can see like here is the raw noise coming in on the roll axis and you're comparing that against a, a comparable flight okay well, raw it's not exactly the same but it's you know the same general character of noise which is what I normally see you know it's not perfectly exactly the same but you see the same general character this is what the filtered noise was on roll and this is what it is now with this new iteration so oh look we're making an improvement the next part is okay prop wash testing you know the the latency was um, shown to be less let's see that so we'll you know run the flights does the video show less prop wash you know is the person feeling seeing less prop wash in the goggles is the video showing the same and then hey when you go to the log you can look at the prop wash and is it less in amplitude and and duration slash frequency once you know you have all that hey you know you got something boom that's what's necessary to then get it in open source projects to get it actually merged in because you have to honestly convince the other guys like hey is this worth it um, why are we merging this in? That same thing is occurring in the private sector as well. And if people are saying, well, no, maybe they just don't do that. You have to be kidding me with that. No proper company. First of all, good luck flying it. I hope that works out for you but because it could just fly in your face if they're not doing testing. So they're doing testing and they have to have this data. So when I'm critical or other people are critical, science-minded people are critical, just publish it. Just say, oh yeah, that's cool, you're critical, you're a hater, here's the data, you're wrong, boom, done. Why aren't people doing that? I have a theory of why people aren't doing that. And you already know what it is. Because the data is not living up to the hype. And if it's not, what's that mean then? Okay, so, that's why I'm a critical person, uh, you know, I'm, a, I'm an engineer. I'm a licensed engineer in the state I live. I, I know how this works. There's people in this industry that are far more experienced and knowledgeable than I. So I'm bringing what I feel is a mediocre knowledge base to this because I think there's far more like Anub and there's there's uh, the people at Brain FPV. I seem very not all the Betaflight devs. I honestly, whenever I post anything and I see a, a Betaflight dev reply. I initially get nervous because I'm like, oh God, am I right? Or did I say something really wrong? Because they know what they're talking about. Same thing for the, the guys of Flight One and so on and so forth. And, and, the, and the Helio guys, you know, when, when they did that thing with Joshua Bardwell, much of the information was accurate. Some of it was not.
the thing that Kebab just did, some of that information uh, was accurate. Some was way not accurate. But, you know, I do give that guy, I, I do give him props. I followed up and he's like, oh yeah, I don't want to be spreading wrong information. Some of it, you know, might be what he was regurgitating what he was told. And some of it might just be his interpretation, which is in some cases a little off, in some cases was way, way off. So he, you know, but he, in my experience, he's, the dude's super modest. And he was like, oh yeah, if you could do a follow-up and correct, I don't want to be getting out more information. So that's, to me, that's honorable. Like, that's, that's how I look at it. Like, hey, this is what I think and know. This is based on information and, and you know, uh, you know, and I'm talking about fundamentals of how, uh, I mean, look at all this data. Uh, if I'm talking about fundamentals of how things work, you know, I'm not just like making this stuff up. I'm pulling this from information. You know, if I browse through here, these are analog filters, chapter four, analog filters, chapter eight. This is all available in that filter calc link. So I'm not just, you know, trying to take you guys for a ride. I have no benefit to tell you misinformation. I think in the market, it seems like more and more people are using that tactic like we'll tell you information which is required to sell things and you know general which is I get it I mean that's that's marketing right but Jesus if I step in and say well you know that's a little way a lie or that's way off don't blast me uh, what I'm saying is it's right here uh, so I, I guess um, yeah that's that's my spiel I would uh, not take everything you hear in this industry, I would take it all as a grain of salt. If people are showing you data, that's a big step. I wish we could get to that. Because honestly, if you really have something, then you, have, you don't know that unless you have data. And if you have data, just send it to people. Why would you not? Facts are gonna be a better seller than hype, guaranteed. Because people like me are gonna join on to purchasing whatever so just that's a, a technique um if you're a purchaser i would be looking for that or i you're getting you could be being taken for a ride i wanted to mention that you know i, I think the direction the concept of a common filter a true common filter is definitely admirable there is major ma the, the problem is what we've been seeing is not actually a true common filter. It's that's why it was called her the fast common filter or the fake common filter because the true fundamental of a common filter is it has a model simulation that's running and there's a predictive step of that model. First is just processing power. So I think that argument will be, wow, well, we have the F3 that's running all by, okay, well that's, the F3 is a very, and we're talking like a couple hundred megahertz here, guys. This is not like a full big processor. So I'm not an expert in that field, but I would be skeptical that that's enough processing power in itself. The bigger skeptical part is, okay, you're telling me you've developed a model of how a quadcopter flies? Really? How are you accounting for all the inertia differences, the motor ramp, or the motor uh, band differences, the prop band differences of each quadcopter? We have major, major variation between five-inch quads, let alone saying, oh, we put it on a two-inch quad, seven-inch quad. How are you accounting for that? Explain that to me, if because I don't believe it. And you know, when we when the common filter first came into the open source world at, at the beginning of this year, it was sold as a common filter, and it was quickly determined it it wasn't. It was basically just a low pass filter. So that track record isn't great. And now we're making those same claims again. I'm just there's major fundamentals. It'd be like if I came to you and say, "Hey, I, I invented warp drive. Are you just going to believe me?" There's a major fundamental oh, uh, challenge to overcome. Come. You have to bend st space time to do that. How did you do that? You don't need to divulge your preparatory secrets. Just verbally explain to me how you overcome those hurdles. You would need hundreds of thousands of samples for a predictive model. Where did you get those? How did you account for even with the samples, all the variation with those? Does the user input what kind of quadcopter they have? Two inch, five inch, six inch? What inertia they have? 
what props they have on there, what motor bands they have. Are you making connection with um, all the tests done by, uh, what's that, Quad Test Bench and with their motor RPM ramping? Just some things I'm, I'm wondering about. So just saying it to me or linking this paper, that ain't gonna do it. Yeah, this is about a common filter, great. Well, I can link a paper on warp drive and that doesn't mean I've done it. Yeah, that's just like a little, I just wanted to show a little bit about, you know, my humble opinion of how things are done. If you talk to people that actually work on real engineering to develop and make real improvements, this is how things are done. That's just, it, it's so, it's so standard that I shouldn't even be needed to talk about this. And, um, but I understand not everybody's in that, that kind of industry or that kind of world. Um, secondarily is, look, if there's something great out there, uh, Brian yeah, White, he helps a lot of people on the black box log, uses a quote a lot that, uh, it's not a quote that he made, but you know, kind of brought it to my attention. It's by Carl Sagan, and it says, extraordinary claims requires extraordinary evidence. Last thing I wanted to throw out there that if anybody has a Helio board, I would love to, you know, if you don't use it or don't like it or it's not working for you, because I know it's, you know, it's working for, I'm, honestly, it's working for people, right? It's also not working for other people. And that's the people reach out to me, right, to need help. And we get to roadblocks and I can't help them. And you know, the beta flight features are stripped out, so they can't use those. And I know on beta flight it would be fine. So then it's like, well, uh, Helios filter is better. Really? Then why is their quad not fly on a Helio, but I can get it to fly on beta flight? So hmm, that's interesting. But uh, it's working for other people on, you know, just to thread that needle. But nobody does testing. Ah! So one of the big fundamental problems with the helio board is it doesn't pass raw noise so you can't really compare filter effectiveness and efficiency but ah uh, ah uh, ah uh, there's a way around that you just mount up a two boards flight control boards like this on the same stack and you put the helio down at the bottom you put a slave board on the top uh or vice versa and then you have them arm at the same time you uh, have the receiver not powered you only have the receiver powered by one but you have the signal with the receiver go to both and then you um, you know just wire up the the master board normal the only thing you need to the slave board is to get it some sort of power and just the receiver signal so when you and then you set them both up right and then when you arm so that the secondary board could have like beta flight set up with its filter stuff uh, i would do the 4.0 the latest editions of the 4.0 so it's you know the most uh, you don't you don't want to use old versions because then it's not really applicable right so you get it all set up you have it so that it re both boards records a black log the back box log independently then when you arm the logging starts you have to switch into a mode as you're recording so that you have the modes in the black box log kind of draw a line in the sand you can see in the logging so you can sync the logs up yes you would think that if you would arm them at the exact same time that it would have the log be exactly but it doesn't so the mode is used to do that you export both of the logs into excel you plop them in there you run them on a graph you can sync them up no big deal so uh, this is a picture where I've ran some somebody else ran some tests at the beginning of this year binding I'm so sorry I have this data it's just it's so monotonous to go through this stuff. But he did some tests on uh, hard mount versus soft mount. So you can see the bottom board is hard mount and this top board is soft mounted. I have all the information here. I just, you know, this is a hobby to me. Um, doesn't just float my boat to just drool through this data all the time. So if somebody would want to help, that would be great. Um, it's there, I'm getting through it. It's just, it's, it's, it's not the funnest thing in the world. Yeah, he did the tests on this, and and you know, but I mean, you can you can go through the the data too and send it to me. So <laughs> that's my excuse. But nevertheless, the the process has been done. If somebody would want to do that and send me all the data, I'll get it up. You know, it's only going to be two logs, so it's not as bad to to go through that. It's pretty easy. But we're trying to uh, see if there's any phase delay added by the soft mounts, which is really friggin' threading the needle, and um, it's. The process of having to make that determination is is complicated, so that's what's taken me a while. But nevertheless, the Helio thing's a lot easier. That, or if they don't, you know, they have a board and they want me. They don't want to do that. They want me to do it. 
it's fine if you want to send me the board. Um, I have a PO box, and I can you know just for work or whatnot, and uh, I can do it. It will take me a little bit because I I'm not going to rip apart a quad to do this, and I would just get some you know probably a Martian two frame, and uh, I need to get some moment motors, and then I have it a four one ESC I could use, um, or I might I don't know. So I might get some components. It just uh, takes a while. I have a basically a budget. I uh, yeah, I can grab this stuff here over the next month or so. I don't know. That's it for my soapbox for today. If you like this kind of video, let me know. If you don't, also let me know. And uh, hope you glean some information out of this, other than just the drama from the drama llama. And the reason I'm saying the drama llama is because that's what they're trying to. The Helio guys are. It's like a team of bullies over there, really. If you fight, if you say anything negative. The Helio founder and all the fans just try to bully you up. And I'm not alone in seeing this. Go Just go check out the Butterflight Slack. You'll see it all over the place. So it's kind of comical to me. So, yeah, I'm going to sign off as the Drama Llama. Thanks, everybody. I hope this helped.